Gallery mods is a big step in any video game, and this is very true with Baldur's Gate 3. Until the official mod support rolls out in September, adding mods to Baldur's Gate 3 is a fun thing to do, but it also is very tedious. So this guide is meant to help walk you through how to install your first mod on Baldur's Gate 3. Now there are a number of guides out there written otherwise on how to do this. I'm just going to step you through little by little and show you how I'll be approaching it. I'll be using the Vortex Manager to do this from uh, nexusmods.com. I know a lot of people don't like that and if that's not what you like, I'm just gonna let you know ahead of time so you don't waste time trying to jump through this video. This will not be the video for you. If you wanna use the Baldur's Gate 3 mod manager or any manual installation, that process is entirely eldritch to me and I wouldn't be able to help you out. But I'll be using the Vortex Manager. I'll show you the prerequisites of what we'll need before we actually jump into installing the mods. So feel free to navigate to any part of the video that interests you the most using the chapters about the timeline in the description. Usually I have a cool way to upfront the knowledge in the video, but unfortunately uh, with a step-by-step -step technical guide like this, it's a little hard for me to do so. But if you end up enjoying this video and it does help you out, please don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe. Each one of those things does help me out in a huge way. Let's get started here on adding your first mod to Baldur's Gate 3. So before we do anything when it comes to modding, I want you to back up your saves in case you screw up and you've got everything safe and sound, you don't have to worry about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our local disk, mine's C, it could be D for you. I have everything saved to D, but it still goes to C, blah, blah, blah. But you're going to go to your C drive. You're going to see everything. You're going to go to users. You're going to go to your username. Mine's Italian Spartacus because I'm narcissistic. Then go into your app data, go into local. And then you're going to want to find Larian. I don't even know. Hell, Larian Studios. Then from there, Baldur's Gate 3, Player Profiles, Public. And you can see the whole link right up here, right? So C drive into users to Italian Spartacus, whatever your username is, to app data, to local, to Larian Studios, Studios to Baldur's Gate 3, to Player Profiles, to Public. And then from there, you've got Save Games. And then from there, Story. So from this, this is pretty much every single save I've got. I would just simply copy the ones that you're going to manipulate um, based off of the character. So for example here, these are all my characters. These are all my saves from Kaled, my main ranger character. Versus all these are all my saves from Koran Dracurus. You know, like save the ones that you want to save or just save them all, back them all up just, in, just so you're, you're certain everything's fine. Um, you do have things on the Steam Cloud, but you just don't want to mess with it. Make sure you have a hard copy before we do any of this. So to start us off, we're going to use the Oath of Conquest Paladin subclass. This is something that we can see right from character creation, so I don't have to go through and load a game up, anything like that. And this allows me to install something pretty quick and easy for you to show off how this do is done. And a lot of the prerequisites that this mod requires are prerequisites that almost every single mod does require. So we've got that. Uh, both covered for us. So one thing before we even get started with this mod, you will probably need to upgrade your .NET framework. Don't worry, that sounds scary. You're like, oh man, what the hell is that? So here's your .NET framework. This is Microsoft's website. I'm going to provide a link to this in the description. Just go ahead and download this. I don't know why Microsoft made a website that looks like a phishing website. Like if you download this, you're just going to lose your bank accounts. But I promise that this uh, is legit. I've downloaded it. It's in my downloads right now and I've, and I've used it and I somehow still have a bank account. But usually if you're very current with updating your windows, most of this stuff is pretty kind of thrown in, but the, the, uh, mod manager and everything like that will tell you, Hey, you need to download this.net framework. It's a pretty easy process. Like I said, you're just simply going to download it from here. So once we, now that we've got that out of the way, let's go through, uh, through oath of the conquest paladin subclass. So looking over here, we see about, about this mod, all this kind of fun action, and we see this button right here. We're gonna click it and it's gonna show us our requirements. So there's some, there are a ton of requirements here and I deliberately chose this too because it's kind of scary. You're like, oh crap, what does all this mean? So this is all of, or these are all the things that this mod author shows off in this section just kind of going through the mod saying, hey, you know, here's all the things that you get from this mod and at what levels. You'll notice that this thing, Scornful Rebuke, happens at level 12. Invincible Conquer at level 12. But as you kind of go through this, it'll start to show you, oopsies. Uh, did I go to the wrong one? 
Yeah, yeah, I did, I did, I did. So, so Scornful Rebuke starts to happen at like 15. So this mod has support for going over the 12 levels in the game. So that's why there's such a laundry list of items here. It says right here, you know, um, Paladin Overhaul, 13 to 20, a bunch of stuff to just add more stuff to it. So mods requiring this file, ignore this part. Offset requirements, ignore this part because we are not going to be using the mod manager. I know a lot of people love this. I don't because it's very finicky if you're not tech savvy. Uh, there are a lot of, the, it's on a GitHub website and that alone, I, I think for a lot of people, their eyes are gonna glaze over. Um, but this, these are the three that we're going to install first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop each one of these into their own tab. Before we even touch this button, files and all that, we're gonna go to this one. Baldur's Gate 3 Community Library. Got it all tabbed up over here. So what we're gonna do then is go to Files. And you can even see requirements here is the, is the mod fixer as well, which I think we've got. Yes, we do. So all three of the prerequisites um, that original mod had are all up in tabs right now. So let's go ahead and press Files. And let's go ahead and press Mod Manager Download. You can manually download this. I don't really wanna do that because I'm just, boring or, or just it pisses me off. So this will now be served uh, via Vortex. I'm gonna download it. And now, let's run over to Vortex. So unfortunately, I cannot zoom in on Vortex. This is the smallest screen in the damn world. I'm, I apologize, I am on a 4K monitor. But you'll see this bar right here that shows me the community library has been installed. Great, cool, it says even enabled. There's more we have to do here, but I wanna jump back to the other mods and get them on before I talk about what we have to do because it's, you're gonna to have to do all of it at once anyway. So let's go to our next mod. We've done the community library. Now we've got the Baldur's Gate 3 mod fixer. Again, files, mod manager download. It's gonna pop over here, automatically just gets loaded in. It's gonna let it do its thing and it's good to go. And then we're gonna jump back here and do the improved UI release ready. Files, mod manager download. And if there was, if you didn't have the proper .NET framework, it would tell you in this process. It would say, hey, uh, heads up, you don't have the right framework. Oh, oh no. So what we've got here though, are these three items. We need another thing. It's this like divine whatever the hell. So if I click this, you'll see diagnostics use of data, Diagnosis using data, deployment requires elevation. We're gonna get there in a sec. But there's a button right here that'll say install SLI or LS lib divine. Click that as well. Because we need all those things online. Divine tool is missing. Baldur's Gate 3 modern pattern in most, if not all cases, will require a third-party tool named LS lib to manipulate game files. So you just press download and it's now going to add that into here. I already had it downloaded. I deleted it for the video. It won't give you that thing. If it does, just press Continue. So now we have four of the basic mods that are required to do anything. As soon as we get access to mod support and this is on uh, Steam Workshop, this will hopefully not be anything that you'll take part in. You'll just be able to follow something on Steam Workshop and it'll be easy fucking done from there. What I wanna say though is before we even jump into other portions, if you don't see this, you need to go to games and you need to click on, let's just find, I already have Baldur's Gate up three up here, but let's just say this was Baldur's Gate. You click the three ellipses and you press, oops, well, there's a button for manage. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I'm just, you don't click the three ellipses. There's a button right here that says manage. You click that and then all those mods you download will automatically go into this section right here where it's all set. So you've got your four base mods. Let's get the last one that we need, which is the original mod that we were talking about. And that is the Oath of Conquest Paladin subclass mod. We're gonna go back to files. We're gonna to go to mod manager download. And you have a bunch of different things that you can do here. Um, but this is just the one, what we want here is the main file. Um, you've got, it shows you the legacy of all the updates to it and everything like that, the different version jumps and all those things. That's more for troubleshooting or if you're really tech savvy and know your way around this, you'd go through that whole route. But just ignore all that. Main files is what you're always gonna choose gonna do that and this even tells you hey these the requirements here are right here make sure you've got them we've already done that so we can go ahead and press download and a lot of the times too the game the this manager will say you need these things and it'll give you options to download it if you click the little um, notification button up here so now we are in 
all we are in this section here we see all of our mods we want to do is press deployment requires elevation so press elevate so it's going to elevate all of our mods so it's set itself to a specific load order we're just going to keep pressing elevate till we can't see it again and it's just putting all the mods in their proper places and everything like that and then we're going to press deploy right up here the little, little chain i just clicked it so now that we've got all that, we're pretty much all set. Now you would think this is the point where you just boot the game up normally. You go ahead, you launch Steam, and press good to go. No, that's not the case. Up in the upper left-hand corner here, you'll see this button, this little play button. Click that. That is going to boot the game up through a specific mod scenario. Whatever. It's basically just going to go directly through the executable. I don't know the whole voodoo of how it all works. You can correct me in the comment sections if you really want. But once you've done that, we have the mods set. So that means they're now locked into the game and we can just as easily delete them. So what I want you to know though, before even jumping into this process of making your actual character or, or manipulating things, you should be backing up your save so that you don't corrupt anything in case you don't want these mods um, in perpetuity or after a certain point. Basically, I've created a save that says modded, and I've got that's the only thing that I manipulate with the mods. Everything else, I don't even touch. So just be careful if you do want to add mods to the game because that always will make it a really sticky situation, and there's no telling how that's going to affect things come the actual mod support, official mod support in from Larian. Now that we've got everything installed, everything is all set up, let's make sure that it's all active. So we're just going to go ahead and, like I said, we're jumping into character creation. Otherwise, you could just simply load your game, whatever you'd want to do. Like if it's a subclass you turned on, in this case, we turn on a specific Paladin Oath. So we're going to switch our class to Paladin, and we're going to switch our subclass here to Oath of Conquest, the new one we just unlocked. <laughs> Fuck, that's cool. Uh, the new one we just unlocked. So that's how this works. This is going to work the same for any of the subclass mods, anything else that you want to activate with the game. Just remember, when you're going through this process, just make sure you've got all of the prerequisites hit. Go ahead and load them in through the Vortex Manager. Make sure you press Deploy Mods and you elevate through the Mod Manager and then start the game through the Mod Manager. I know it seems very convoluted and it's kind of scary. I almost didn't do it because I was like, I, I kind of gave myself the excuse. I'm like, uh, it's too convoluted. I don't want to do it. I'll wait for the official mod support. So I'm making this as a companion to all of the um, modded content I'm going to do versus all the, or I'm sorry, as far as the new uh, subclasses, all of the new stuff that's added in, like, you know, Oath of Conquest here or the Psy Warrior for Fighter, other ones like that. The Artificier, which is just a brand new class added in through modding. There's a lot of really fun, cool things that you can use to get a little bit more longevity. And the nice thing about it is most, if not all, of the subclasses and classes that you're modding into the game are fifth edition classes. They're just taken as a one-to-one -one and put into the game, so they're already kind of pre-balanced. There are certain things in Baldur's Gate 3 that are different than fifth edition, but they've done a really good job of trying to make it match into a digital realm and not just kind of fall flat on its face, except the arcane trickster, but that's neither here nor there. But if you have any questions or you're trying to do this for yourself and you got stuck at one point, just go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. I'm pretty good at helping people out through that stuff, but you might have to jump into our Discord where more people can help you out. You can find a link to that in my description as well as all the links for all the stuff that we've talked about here today. But go ahead and let me know in the comment section below if you need help with anything. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one and take care.